you know, all of a sudden, Matt Gates is very concerned that, uh, you know, there's there could be a better use of time, you know, uh, on the uh, in the house. You know, it, it, spending all this time trying to talk to Steve Bannon. And now they're, you know, it, when we all know they could spend their time more wisely helping the American people. Now, one would think if you felt this way, you would just call a roll call vote and no one would need to speak. You could just vote on Steve, you know, on the Steve Bannon thing, yay or nay, and get the fuck on with it. But apparently not. Um, but let's let's see where he, this is his own posted thing. This is Matt Gates loves to post his own stuff to, about how what he says. Let's see indeed what he actually says in this thing. Hold on, I'm gonna turn that thing on and then go back to here. And then we hit this play and pause and this is the business. January 6th was not a good day. Well, that's a uh, way, way to take the uh, the tough road. That's uh, it's not a good day. It was a yeah, bold statement. I mean, downright poetry. But to my knowledge, there's been no charge of insurrection or terrorism. Largely, the charges that have been levied against those who are involved in breaking the law result in uh, property damage charges. Uh, largely, except for those that were trying to interfere with uh, the function of government and trespass and do property damage, using that as at, and 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 the incitement of violence towards members of Congress and the carrying out of their duties, there is no such thing as a charge of insurrection, insofar as I know. But what these do add up to is insurrection soup. Essentially, these this you need a you need a a big you need a, a broth of trespass. Uh, with the intent to cause bodily harm, a little sprinkle of that, and some sliced carrots of uh, of hang Mike Pence, and then the idea that you're going to stop the count because Mike Pence wasn't doing it, and, and then yeah, and then bashing through a window and sh shitting in Pelosi's office, and then trying to steal things so that you could s stop the government from working, selling laptops to Russia and whatnot. And it's my expectation that if there are folks who broke the law, they should be treated no better or no worse than anyone else. Who right. It's very important that the people who are charged for what they did on that day, we should just focus on the people who did it that day. Never mind there's a mastermind behind it. Never mind that it was a coordinated effort. Never mind that someone paid for buses to bring them there. Never mind that they were all talking on WhatsApp and conversing about what entrance would be best and they were getting some heads up from people in power. Never mind that part, just the throw the grunts in jail and get on with it. It's these particular laws, but all of this is ridiculous. What a gathering in a room. Mr. Chairman, the American people are in trouble. I was recently in Qatar on a bipartisan delegation led. <laughs> yeah, you were. Mr. Issa, and we learned directly that thousands upon thousands of Afghans were let into our country with principally no vetting, no screening. The general we met with. Yeah, why would we uh, let in the people who helped us for years and their wives without first vetting their eight-year-old and their 12-year-old daughter? I mean, honestly. At the base in Doha said that refugees were merely handed a blank sheet of paper and whatever they wrote on it was deemed their paper passport. And people are concerned about that. Yeah. You know, uh, we should, in any case, uh, make sure that the people that we rescue from a violent situation, um, if they didn't leave the house with their proper identification, should just basically be dropped in the desert somewhere. I mean, uh, do you have ID? No. Uh, we, we, we can't let you in. But my things were burned by the Taliban. Oh, well, uh, tough shit, I guess. But my my husband has a bullet in his shoulder still from helping us no that's not gonna how do we know was i wrote i you, the, you're that soldier worked with us that's not good enough on our border we functionally have a turnstile i never believed a turnstile i see so they come in and then they go right back out or uh, you mean a revolving door president biden could be worse than president obama on the border but we've got well, actually, Obama was better on the border than Trump was, and you know, if you're using your standard. From the Obama days of catch and release to the Biden days of import and release. Or import and release. I see. So we we sent planes 
to Haiti to fly people in. Just we're just we're just going to Guatemala and picking up plane loads of people and bringing them in. So we're is there a is there a duty on those folks? Do they if we're importing them? Obviously, there has to be some sort of a tariff, or at least taking a foot. But being really beckoned across the border as a consequence of our policies, and then shuttled around the country. Beckoned across the. By the way, the only people beckoning people across the border are, of course, Republicans who are telling the entire world we have an open border, and that Biden said, "Come on in," which neither of which is true. And our supply chain issues have come to the forefront of the minds of so many. They have come to the forefront. I mean, if uh, of all the things that come to the forefront, this is one of them. Americans, I mean, supply chain used to be something people learned about in economics class. And now the supply chain issues are resulting in inadequate access to things that people need. And we see the Washington Post tell Americans to just lower their expectations. Well, yeah, they, I mean, you can't pray you know, plastic toys from China into existence at this point. Yeah, so this this would lower your expectations because it has nothing to do with the output of the United States or anything like that. These are things that are normally shipped from another country and they ain't coming from there anymore because they have no power and they have their, their economy is collapsing. So they've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> In the American economy, I was recently at the port of Long Beach. I saw just you know, cargo ship after cargo ship. You could about walk from the port of Long Beach to the Channel Islands in California without ever having your feet touch the water. Well, if your legs are uh, 600 feet long and uh, you're obviously wearing galoshes. Cargo ships that cannot come into port because of a total failure of the U.S. economy. Sorry, a total failure of the U.S. economy. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't realize that uh, your debit card no longer works, that no one's cash can is worth anything anymore. They, no one is selling anything or buying anything, bought or sold or sold, selling anything, sold or bought or bought or sold. Our country has been humiliated abroad. And well, I mean, yes, you, you just got back from Qatar. It's humiliating that people in that country had to see you. I mean, just to, people of Qatar who may be watching this know not all of us uh, sex traffic 17 year olds and have the head the size of a watermelon um, with uh, big boy hair. Afghanistan, where reliance on this strategy of an Afghan government being left to facilitate American departure and withdrawal turned out to be a total fiction. And yet here we are. Wait, wait, wait. Your, your clip, was that an edit? Departure and withdrawal turned out to be a total fiction. And yet here we are. Yep. Yeah. Do you notice that guy, that little shiver? Yeah. Uh, see, I most of us would have thought that this little post from Matt Gates turns out uh, he's he's cutting shit out. A total fiction. And yet here we there are is. reviewing Steve Bannon's podcast. Is it, it well for things he said the day before January six? Not overall. They they weren't giving it like three stars. That would be far too generous. You know, the average American, when they wake up, I don't think one of the first hundred things they think about is Steve Bannon's podcast. Yeah, they shouldn't have to. See, that's why government uh, can take care of that while the rest of us are getting on with things, because we don't want to have to think about it. No one wants to think about that. I mean, have you seen the man's skin? Things he said before or after January 6th. I think that is... Well, uh, before and during has a lot to do with uh, what you're talking about. After, eh, mostly a cover story. A uniquely Washington obsession. And it wouldn't be so damaging to our country if it wasn't absorbing the capacity of the Congress to meet the actual challenges that the American people are facing. I mean, do you yeah. Why aren't they discussing the Matt Gates supply chain lube bill? Why aren't they, why have they not brought to the floor the Matt Gates uh Build that wall better back bill for, with funding straight from Mexico through uh, Save America PAC. Why, why are they wasting all this time during this particular committee when they have all these other committees that other people are on? Really think that your constituents are out there hoping that you guys are here sharing your hot takes on Steve Bannon's podcast rather than dealing with the inflation that is crushing them? 
the border crisis that is concerning them. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Is it are we dealing with only things that are crushing or because if it's if it's th it's something that's concerning them, then obviously we're not going to just deal with everything that concerns people. It's only going to be the things we can do something about. I mean, we're all concerned about the tooth fairy and uh, why he never submits to a background check. Uh, it's you know, it's obviously a problem. The problems we have abroad. It's it's truly shameful that this is uh, this is uh, got the focus uh, and the obsession uh, of so many in the Congress. Uh, no, they, d it doesn't have the obsession. They just need it into the record and, and they need to interview this dude. He's not he's not the primary person. No one's living and breathing for what the fuck Steve Bannon says, except Matt Gates, which we'll get to in a moment. There's been discussion today about Mr. By the way, in case you're worried about, you know, Congress wasting their time with uh, on, on Steve Bannon, uh, Gates goes on Steve Bannon's show the same day. So, yeah, right. That's uh, I know. It's, it's curious, isn't it? Mr. Bannon's response being one of total and complete defiance. I believe those are the words that my colleague uh, from uh, Colorado used. But that's not true. Mr. Bannon simply wants claims of executive privilege to be resolved. Yeah, he wasn't working for the White House when this took place. He has no claim of executive privilege. The White House is not. They have said they they don't respect that as executive privilege. The president chit chatting with a dude is not executive privilege. If that guy's an advisor, put him on the books. And I am not competent to resolve those questions. I don't know. Well, that's true of all questions, except um, uh, what age is underage? I'm sure you legally know that. Those claims are meritorious or not. But I do think that a person, when presented with such demands from the January 6th committee, might reasonably want those questions to be resolved in the absence of some total and complete defiance. We saw. Uh, no, he can fuck off and show up for the subpoena because Congress says so. If he if he can br if he wants to bring a lawyer and have that lawyer go, we believe that's an action of exec privilege. He can he can exercise that when he shows up. In the Don McGahn scenario, where once the constitutional questions and legal issues were resolved, Mr. McGahn came in and we were able to. And Mr. McGahn was actually working for the president when that happened. Steve Bannon was not. Have an interview. He also wasn't in the fucking White House. Much has been said today about the failing institutions in America. Oh, by the way. Uh, everybody watching, don't pay attention to the fact that Steve Bannon's uh, citing of executive privilege is proof that he was talking to Trump on January 6th and in the lead up to it, because the, there would be no reason to use executive privilege if he hadn't been in contact with the president, nor any expectation of privilege if he hadn't been in contact with the president. So that is a tacit admission that he was indeed in contact with the president on uh, at least the fifth and sixth and in the lead up just saying oops and and who is to blame for them so many of my colleagues on the left talk about trump being this this uh savage against our institutions and no i wouldn't use savage it's just like blithering idiot uh anti-democratic un-american fool something like institutions are all going to fail because of trump and the insurrectionist republicans but truly, this is a case of projection. After the 2016 election, Democrats repeatedly called President Trump an illegitimate president. They yeah, but they didn't storm the fucking Capitol and, 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 and never once threatened to hang Mike Pence. Damaged the institution of our electoral process by claiming that Trump was a Russian agent. How f Uh, no, actually, that... That wasn't a factor at all. It didn't affect anyone's willingness to vote. As a matter of fact, the alternative is true in that the January 6th insurrection is driving down voter turnout amongst Republicans, which I am in on all ethical level against. And yet. Me and fake that all turned out to be. We've even seen the uh, Democrats back institutions that have done great violence to our sense of justice. When the FBI was changing evidence in a secret court to go after President Trump and his allies. Actually, the the one guy who was busted for changing something on a FISA warrant would have lessened the chance of 
of Carter Page getting his uh, warrant extended. He was actually helping Trump and Carter Page by lowering the chance. And that's what he lied about. They certainly were able to rely on my colleagues on the left to have their back. And the U.S. dollar is a pretty important institution to American families. And the policies being considered by the majority in this Congress would crush the dollar. It would would crush the dollar. How so? Ex well, I'm sure he explains. I shouldn't jump in too quickly. Punish savers and seniors. Savers and seniors? Oh, you mean by like driving down interest rates to like uh, below zero? You know that whole concept? Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oops, one second. Let's see. Trump wants negative interest rates. You mean, uh, you mean, you mean like that? You mean like wanting, wanting negative interest rates so that everybody's savings aren't worth shit? Er, that, remember that? Remember this whole thing? Remember him wanting as to be able to borrow money uh, at a negative interest rate. Remember that? Yeah, the dollar is at an all-time high right now. It's part of, yeah, don't get me started. Like, uh, yeah, monetary policy in and of himself, like the idea that we're going to drive down the dollar is actually, to some degree, like there's, a, there's that argument that the dollar can be too strong at times as far as, uh, you know, consumer goods across the world. There's there's a lack of dollars in the world, which is ironic because everybody talks about we're just printing money, leading to mm -hmm. massive inflation, getting people caught where, with real impact on their lives that go beyond your perception of Steve Bannon's podcast. This is sort of adorable. So this week, it is the institution of Congress that is failing to meet the needs of the people. But in the prior panel, we heard Chair Thompson and Congresswoman Cheney really give up the game because uh -oh. this isn't about a contempt proceeding. No, this is not. This is this is about what is this about? Everything the American people are watching today huh? is about the inward turning of our. Oh, dear God. I I didn't think he said in uh, inward. I, that that concerned me for a second. He He said inward just for the record security apparatus and law enforcement against political rivals. Mr. Thompson, Chairman Thompson, refer, talked about criminal contempt referrals. I would proffer to the committee that Chairman Thompson knows exactly why he made that statement, because he knows there are willing hands at the Department of Justice ready to receive such a referral and to criminalize our politics. Mr. This isn't politics. There's a subpoena. That's part of the law. If you have a legal reason to ignore a subpoena, you can file a lawsuit around it or make that direct statement, but you can't just leave it up to anybody else and say, I'm not showing up. And you can show up and go, I think this violates the, the you know, executive privilege and there's no action on that. And then you can make them go, well, we disagree. And the White House isn't exercising that. That is up to the current Inhabitant of the White House, which is uh, President Biden, he's not exercising it. So uh, have fun in jail, dum dum. And wants to wait to see if there is a privilege issue resolved by a court. And as a consequence, this is all just theater to set up the utilization of criminal process against Steve Bannon. Well, it, it, none of it would be necessary if he just came down and testified. What's the problem? We also heard Congresswoman Cheney echo those very themes. In her comments regarding Leader McCarthy, someone that I don't agree with in all circumstances, Congresswoman... Except for the Trump, uh, rusty trombone issues. Then, then, I mean, they're all in. He said that Mr. McCarthy had been especially active in blocking the January 6th committee. Those words were chosen on purpose because obstructing a congressional investigation, as we all know, is a crime. And so uh -huh. this isn't about Mr. McCarthy's discussions. This isn't about his perspective. This isn't about his votes or his speeches. This is about setting up people like Steve Bannon and Kevin McCarthy for criminal process. Well, no, not, you don't have to set it up. You just establish that the law is there. 
I mean, ignorance of the law is no excuse, but reminding the rest of the world and especially Republicans that these guys are breaking the law in the process, just talking about it, seems a wise thing to do. Perhaps, in deference to you, uh, the Republican Party is made up wholly of dumbasses who think the law does not apply to them. And in these circumstances, it behooves the uh, head of the committee or any of the other people on the committee to bring up the fact that, indeed, the law does uh, work for everyone and apply to everyone and that uh, you don't get to skate out of it just because uh, Trump likes pointing at you and doing the hand job gesture at a rally. And the American people need to know that th- that that has begun now. It began in that committee. And this is another step along the way uh, to criminalize political activity. By the way, uh, this is from his Twitter feed. And if you'll notice down there, it says Gates rips. J6 obsessed Dems targeting Steve Bannon. He's ripping them right now, as opposed to, I know what you're thinking, boring them to tears. But uh, no, he's apparently ripping them currently. And if you want to see more of that, apparently you can see all firebrand content because you can go to gates.how.gov slash firebrand if you want to see this kind of lightning. But the American people should also know It's not just the Kevin McCarthy's and the Steve Bannon's that are going to be targeted. No, it's obviously uh, going to be the Trump's and the uh, the Mark Meadows, um, the other people who've been (laughs) mentioned by the committee. Not just going to be the powerful and the rich and the famous and people you see on TV and the smelly and the warty. The tell for that is that the federal government is going to be reviewing transactions over six hundred dollars. Well, no, that's that's actually changed. Um, let's see. IRS reporting level. Uh, uh, hold on. Whoops. Quit. Go back. I was watching it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, quit it. I just want to see the paper, don't I? All right, well, I'll just have to show you the links. Uh, House Dems take step back from Biden on tax hikes. Democrats agree to narrow Biden plan, giving IRS bank data. Uh, having reached a deal to narrow President Joe Biden's plan to require financial institutions report account flows to the Internal Revenue Service, uh, it is now at ten thousand dollars instead of six hundred. That's just so you know. But I mean, Gates knows this because he was, he works where this happened. And also he know he works in the part of the government that requested the low number in the first place, House Democrats. And then it w- they were like, they included it in, in the Biden plan. And then Biden, then the, in the Senate Democrats went, now nah, that's too much. And people are freaking out. And it went back up to $10,000. So, but he, by the way, he knows this. So he's just pretending he doesn't know this right now. That's what they want to do. And the whole reason that's the case is because it's not going to be an effort exclusively against those with money and power. It is going to be an effort against regular Americans to criminalize their politics. How do you criminalize someone's politics based on how much money passes through their account in a year? Was it anybody who's got below $10,000 like, oh, they're poor, probably a Democrat. Let them go. Anybody over $10,000, probably a Republican, probably vote a Republican. My friends, Democrats need January 6th right now more than ever. They need it because they can't pass a bill. I mean, it, it, this isn't Republicans. This well, one- they already passed the infrastructure bill. They're just bringing it back. So then, and, and then, of course, the other bill is being negotiated right now. The gentleman from... I'm sorry, what bills have you passed? We'll wait. New Jersey, Mr. Gottheimer and others in the Blue Dog Caucus saying, we were promised a vote on the infrastructure bill, and it is a betrayal of the trust that we have with Speaker Pelosi that that vote didn't occur. So here we are. You can't get an infrastructure bill. You can't get a reconciliation bill. Put a pin in that. We'll uh, we'll revisit that in a couple weeks. You can't meet the needs of the country. The border is a mess. Afghans are coming in unvetted. The dollar is crumbling. The economy is failing. The dollar is crumbling. That that one that's a surprising choice 
right there. The dollar is crumbling. Okay. Supply chain issues are hurting Americans' families. And right, but that doesn't actually, there's nothing you could do about a bunch of those. You, literally nothing other than over time, move, you know, shorten the supply chain, move it closer to home or, tr or wait for companies to move their factories and, and processing plants out of China. Desperately need to obsess about January 6th. I would suggest that you need to move on and the American people are ready to move on. Oh, I, oh, you know what? You know, I guys, let's just pack it up. He's right. I, I there's in this a waste of time. We could all just be, uh, you know, laboring over um, right wing talking points and uh, and going to the floor and yammering about them instead of working on the fact that there was the biggest attack on our democracy uh, since the War of 1812. If we are going to obsess about calls for violence, it would be important to note that there's a good amount of hypocrisy in this Democrat-led effort. Mm -hmm. For example, when Congresswoman Maxine Waters called on Democrats to physically intimidate President Trump's cabinet officials. Uh, physically intimidate them by getting in their face and telling them they're not welcome? Is that, is that physical intimidation? Are you on board with the idea, please be on board, Matt Gates, with the idea that that qualifies as physical intimidation? There was no such effort. I was physically intimidated by a woman in a pussy hat telling me to piss off. It's, I, I think my arm still hurts. For contempt or review or committees or commission, Congresswoman Waters said, let me make sure, let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd and you push back on them and you tell them they're not welcome anymore. It was a Democrat Missouri state senator who said, I hope Trump is assassinated. It was former Attorney General. A, a, sorry, Democratic state senator. And this has to do with Washington, D.C. How? Eric Holder, who said, no, when they go low, we kick them, referring to Republicans, physical kinetic energy against your political opponents. Yeah, I think that's an analogy. Uh, but in, oh, look, are we? We heard Speaker. Uh, that was an edit. What'd you take out there? Pelosi also say, quote, I'm counting down the hours till he's gone. I plan to pull him out of there by his hair, his little hands and feet. Time and again. Ouch, a little hands hit. We see these calls for violence. We see actual violence that, that we But you want those prosecuted, which never resulted in any physical violence, but an event that actually resulted in physical violence. And, and I'll go, I'll, I'll, I will grant that the calls for violence are bad and no one should do them. I have rules about that. You guys know I have a rule about that. I think it sucks. I think that was a mistake on Maxine Waters' part. But if this asshole wants to go, we need to investigate that stuff or call that on the carpet when it didn't, when it was all metaphorical and did not result in any physical harm in an, in an attempt to keep us from looking into a day when physical harm occurred, not just to Democrats, by the way, Let's understand, they built the gallows and they were saying, hang Mike Pence. This was, they were going to shoot Nancy Pelosi in her friggin' brain is the uh, phrase. And then they were going to hang Mike Pence. This, this became a, a regular, uh, you know, chant that day. They broke in. They smashed through into the Capitol. They, they injured 140 police officers. He doesn't want to look into that. The actual... The, the actual physical activity that harmed human beings who were protecting our democracy because he doesn't agree with something that Maxine Waters says. Right. I'm sure he will call out MTG in the same way. Far more grave and far more mm -hmm. damaging to our country mm -hmm. uh, throughout the summer of 2020 than the unfortunate acts on a bad day on January 6th. Yeah, it was just, guys, it was a bad day. It was a bad day. It was like, you know what I mean? It was like a lot of stuff going on. I missed my train. You know, people shit in Pelosi's office. You you spilled some coffee on your slacks and they were, you know, they're taupe and not tan. So it really... I would encourage the committee. Oh, and, and a cop got his uh, spine chipped while he was being crushed in a door by a bunch of Trump supporters yelling heave ho and pushing against police officers before they stormed into the Capitol and brought a Confederate flag into the American Capitol. Yeah. Congress to do what the American people have done, move on from this, and let's focus on the actual issues that affect. Affect, affect, affect what?
That was that's an interesting edit. Um, yes, it, Matt Gates wants you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't have time for this. You, we don't have time to obsess over. Oh shit! Apparently, we do. Apparently, not only do we have a a a, a responsibility, I suppose, to uh, to fret over Steve Bannon. Now, uh, Matt Gates got. By the way, could have taken those remarks that he made entered them into the record and go my my in 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 deference to time this shouldn't take any longer than it does i know you guys are going to vote the way you're going to vote so here's my uh statement i'm entering into the record and i am going to uh i you know i'm i'm going to say i i disagree with what's going on here today 